thank goodness I'm in a better mood than I was a couple of days ago when I was whining and crying on here. Um, so I said I wasn't going to come on. A couple of things have happened. I've had to debunk a whole lot of very dumb rumors coming out of a certain person's Stan's camp. This is going to be one of those videos that I'm not even going to attempt to monetize because I know YouTube is just going to shut me down, but this is very necessary. This needs to be said. Okay. I'm Suzanne Titkemeyer. I wrote for No Longer Quivering. Hey, for over 10 years, nearly 10 of that was with Pathios. Hey, Diane, I'm going to talk today about the aftermath of Gwen Shamlin Lara's death. One of the things that has happened is that it's one of the most disturbing things that you could imagine. The plane went down on the 29th of May in Percy Creek Lake and there were no survivors, even though there were a lot of members, of the, well, not a lot of members of the church, church leadership. There were two couples that were church leadership. There was a son-in-law and then there was Gwen and her, nope, Gwen and her husband, Joe Lara, Laura, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, I'm doing better, Star Lily. I pretty much decided whatever the whatever the diagnosis is, is the diagnosis. And we'll run from there. Kick some ass. Hey, Aaron. So this plane crash and the NTSB is still, they still haven't completed their findings. I understand. I talked to somebody last night. I know that used to be involved with that organization. And while they've said what they think it'll probably be, and I think I'm pretty sure they're going to blame pilot error or no maintenance or some combination of the two on the death, which is pretty horrible. Uh, the dinner went well and went really well. I laughed a lot. So it's pretty, and the, person I had dinner with was a member who had worked for the NTSB before. Well, excuse me, let me back up. He is a, he was a, um, what do you call it? He was an air traffic controller who was familiar with the NTSB. Not that he actually worked for them. He may have worked with them at various times. I don't know. But I talked to him just a little bit about this. And I'm pretty sure they are going to blame pilot error and maintenance on the plane anyway. I'd already heard that. The story, Diane, if you're not familiar with it, is Gwen Shamblin Lara was a huge success in the early to mid 90s among evangelical churches. She preached a program called Way Down Workshop for um, to lose weight. The church I went to, I was the coordinator for our church for that. I ran that program for a long time some years can lose a lot of weight using the program. There's some things about it that aren't good. There's some things about the program that are good. The pastor at the church that I went to came to me in like the early 2000s and said, you have to stop this. And I had to say, well, why? Because people are benefiting from it. He said, well, because Gwen Shamblin has now divorced her husband, started her own church, denied the Trinity, and said any number of goofy things, including the church would teach families to discipline their children using glue sticks so they would not leave bruises. The church is very secretive and insular. I don't want to say, well, I'm going to say the word because I know I'm not going to be able to get um, monetized for this even if I try. Cult, 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 cult. Everything about the remnant fellowship and everything that Gwen was saying just sounded more and more like a cult. So a lot of the churches that were involved with Gwen and her programs broke away at that point. The divorce was one thing. Preaching that there was no Trinity was something else too much for most people. Uh, hey, Cheryl, I'm just talking about Gwen Shamlin Lair again. So this happened, and like I said, the two couples in leadership of the church, the son-in-law and Gwen and her new husband, were the victims. Nobody survived. If you listen to the tape from the cockpit, alarm goes off right before they crash, and somebody says, uh-oh, or oh no, it sounds like 
and then they crash. So nobody really knows for sure what happened. It is thought that something malfunctioned and he got an alarm and in the lake, who knows? But exactly 100% what happened. No, it's not, not a murder, Diane. It was more of a fact that her husband was piloting the plane. He had not kept up with his physicals. You're supposed to keep up with your physicals when you fly airplanes and jets and things. You're required every couple of years to go in and, and do one, prove you don't have high blood pressure or any of the other things that can affect you while you're flying. He had neglected to go in and get his. He'd skipped it for whatever reason. Who knows? He uh, wasn't apparently rated to fly that plane, from what I understand. I don't know. And um, here's what I know about the NTSB that I was able to confirm last night. If there was any chance of pilot error or equipment failure, rather than bad air traffic controlling, directing them in the lake, there's going to be, that's what they're going to put the cause on. That's what the NTSB is going to do. They're not going to say that their um, flight guys did anything wrong. It'll be put on the pilot and the maintenance of the equipment, which is probably where it should be from researching the facts of the case and, and listening. Hey, hey, real, Notif realification. So long story short, the survivors could now sue the estate of Joe Lara. That's going to be their only recourse. So I'm kind of sort of talking about hair's hot and heavy today. Um, okay, so something crossed my desk today about it finally. Somebody asked me, a friend of mine, Cindy Kunzman, who's a good friend of mine, a real life friend, not just an internet friend, passed me a link for a fundraiser being done to benefit Sandy Solomon. Sandy Solomon real I believe that'll happen. They'll deny the claim. The insurance company will deny the claim because he was out of bounds. Sandy Solomon is the maternal grandmother of the children of Jessica and Jonathan Walters. They were one of the two couples besides Laura's that died on that plane. And they left behind three children. Sandy is trying to raise money to sue for custody because this is a really heinous thing that the high demand religious organization cult that believes in beating children with glue sticks is done. They have done an in run around the family and they applied for and received temporary custody of the three children. Even though they are not relations, they are not blood relations to those three children. They're keeping the three children within the church group. <sighs> yeah, happy Catter Day to you too, Amanda. So that's where we are now. They're also applying to for permanent custody of all three of the children, is my understanding. And that's where Sandy comes in. Sandy wants custody of her grandchildren very badly. And she's going to have to fight a church that has deep pockets, that has quite a bit of money for custody, which is kind of sickening if you think about it, because she, um, okay, I can't really speculate for sure on what the relationships were between her and her daughter or anything else. But I can tell you from having been part of a high demand religious group, a cult type church, that they will fight for everything like that. They think that they are the ones to raise those children, not the grandparents, not any other family members. They think that they're the only ones that are suitable to do so. And they'll spend money to do that too. So that's what they're doing. They're trying to fight her for custody. And she's going to require apparently at least a $10,000 retainer for a lawyer. And there is now a GoFundMe that I'm going to link in the comments below. If you want to take a look, if you feel led to give, give. If you don't, don't. I'm strictly no pressure whatsoever. But here is the thing I wanted to say also. And I said this on Twitter. I'm probably going to piss somebody off. But you know something? 
I don't care. I think this is too important. Now, I'm not... Yes, she's having to fight for custody of her own flesh and blood. That is wrong on every level. She is a child's grandmother, children's grandmother. She deserves custody. And, and um, I'm hearing there that they're limiting visitation with her. I don't know what relationship she had with her daughter and her son-in-law. I don't know what that's like. I don't know if it was a good or a bad relationship. I don't know if she was part of those kids' life or not. I'd say it's always a possibility that may have been one of those, I'm just going to come out and say it, cult things, where the family is so caught up in the cult church that they cut all normal family ties with family members like grandmothers and cousins and uncles and aunts and things. I've seen this happen time and time again. I've seen so many of these organizations tell people, Cut off a relationship between you and so-and-so. We're your family now. We are your family. Your family is not your family. We will take that spot. And that's what I can see is likely happened with this church. How radically, you know, secretive they are. Run by a lady who clearly had issues. I wish your brother was licensed there too. I really do because those children, those children need their own lawyer. I am hoping that the, um, I'm hoping that the courts, what they actually do is they issue an order for a guardian ad litem. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Someone who is poised to represent the, the best interest of the child. Not the cult church, not the grandmother, but the children. What needs to happen with the children who would be best for the children to go to? I would think in this case, and like I said, I don't have a lot of knowledge about this. I would think the grandmother would be the natural choice. Or the grandparents switching the kids off. Who knows? But with one family taking care of the children primarily. I don't know, Diane. I don't know how anybody could even think that, except that I do know that the Remnant Fellowship, they have deep pockets and they have lots of lawyers because I've seen them go up against other people before. I've seen them be sued before. I've seen all of that, and it's not pretty. So I'm going to issue a challenge, and this is gonna. This is my sticky point. I hate doing this. But I think that this is one of those cases where I almost have to. Katie Joy, Catherine Paulson of Without a Crystal Ball made video after video after video after video about the plane crash and indulged in all kinds of speculation about whose fault it was in all of that without even mentioning what the um, long-term effects may be. Tennessee, correct, correct. Katie Joy, even though I do not like you and I have zero respect for you, I'm going to issue the challenge that you promote this fundraiser for the children to go to the grandparents as many times as you made videos about, about the plane crash, as many videos as you made, as much time as you spent, as much money as you exploited in clicks and views, and as many times as you sensationalized this, I'm asking you, I'm begging you, please spend a like amount of time promoting this poor grandmother's fundraiser. It's the right thing to do. It's the only thing to do. And to do anything less just proves yet again that you're just another, you're just another clicks and coins person. So I'm throwing that out there. I'm even willing to cease hostilities even more than I already have because I've barely talked about you in weeks. So I'm throwing that out there. Please consider it. I'm going to link you in here. I'm going to link the fundraiser. 
Let's get some money going to this family. Let's get them where they need to be so that they can fight the church. I suspect it's going to be a hard and expensive fight because the church has such a deep pockets and big lawyers. Maybe Jen. Yeah, maybe Jen from Fundy Friday is good. I'm going to go ahead and put that on her, maybe on her um, YouTube wall and say, hey, do this. Because I know she's talked a couple of times about the Gwen Shamblin um, thing. I only wrote one or two pieces at NLQ about Gwen. Just talking about how weird it was and what happened and about the lawsuit with the glue sticks. Because that's pretty awful that they would go ahead and decide to beat children. Anything that has to do with physical abuse to children, I am diametrically opposed to in every single way. So that's that's all I have to say today. And that's why I came on today. I wasn't planning on doing any videos today. But I wanted to go ahead and do this one. Because it's just too important. Come on, Katie, do it. Okay, you guys. I'll see you later. I doubt tomorrow I'm driving to San Jose tomorrow. Monday, I meant falling in the hands of the medical profession. So this very unlikely I will be because I don't even know when I'm driving back yet, whether I'm driving back Monday night, Tuesday morning. I guess it depends upon what they do to me and how I react as to whether or not, whether or not I'm going to be back again who knows who knows and if they tell me it's what i think it might be it might take me a day or two to kind of get my mind wrapped around that and cry a little bit because i hate crying on here it's the worst it really is the worst you guys have a wonderful day